Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 5.56 and in this lesson we're going to talk about using our envelopes, whether it be the filter envelope or the amplitude envelope, to control other parameters inside of the polysynth. So in pretty much all analog and digital synthesizers, you have this ability to take a modulator, whether that's a filter envelope or just an envelope in general, an ADSR envelope or an LFO, have that be your source of modulation and then select a destination. So in this case, this is LFO one, this is our source. And let's say we want it to control the filter frequency. That is our destination. Okay, really, really simple. And Bitwig handles this a lot easier than other synthesizers, like for example, this one or probably any other synth you've come across, which has a more complex uh, sort of matrix, or you have to select very specific parameters to determine what envelope is actually controlling what parameter and by how much. And with analog, you know, those are kind of hardwired what one thing can control. With Bitwig, it doesn't work that way. You can use this, for example, the amplitude envelope to control panning, to control even additional parameters on the filter envelope to control the filter, to control some of these uh, things in the oscillators. So we're just going to talk about it a little bit and um, hopefully this will all make sense to you guys. So we have our amplitude envelope right here and we can take a listen to the sound. I'm going to open up the filter. Okay, like so, nothing all that exciting. But I can take this amplitude envelope and I could actually use it on something like the pan pot. Okay, how do I do that? Well, I select this over here. This stands for amplitude envelope generator. I can click it. And now anything that turns green, I can impart this same kind of motion to within the polysynth. If I try to add an effect in here, it's not going to work. At some point, I hope it does. And I'm a little surprised that with the modulators that Bitwig doesn't have like a ADSR envelope. Hopefully we'll see that too in the future because this is going to be hardwired to what's happening here with the amplitude envelope and that can kind of be obnoxious. But we can control the amount that we want to send to it. So we do have like a depth control here. So if I put this to one, The max value when I click this note, when the attack goes all the way up, is going to hit right at the center. Okay, and since sustain is up to 100%, it's going to stay there. So let's take a listen to this. And obviously you need to have headphones on or some kind of uh, stereo playback device. If I pull the sustain down, after the attack stage finishes, it's going to get up to that center point, and it's going to jump back down somewhere here to the left. Maybe I want to be a little higher. Again, these are like, <laughs> this is why understanding that these kind of work in an exponential way and not linear is important. Because even though I pulled this towards 50%, it almost jumped all the way back to the left. So I'll have to find a better value. And if we want that to be a smooth transition back, we'll just set some decay time. And voila, now we can add some release to the actual amplitude. And we can see how that also triggers back to this default position of minus 100 for the pan. I could take this uh, amplitude envelope generator and I could put it all the way up to two. And so now it's gonna go, instead of stopping here, it's gonna go all the way around. Okay, and if my sustain is up higher and then it has to release back, it's gonna shoot back really quick from the top to the bottom here. Like so, so very simple, but obviously you don't want too many things following along exactly what's happening with your amplitude envelope, but I think it's nice that you can control the amount. So if we had this like sets like minus 17 to start, 
and then just had this like you know something very subtle it wouldn't be quite such an extreme effect so that's really important understanding that the depth if you're familiar with other um, synthesizers is just how far you pull this around Okay, and you can try that with a variety of things inside of the synthesizer. It's lots of fun. The other one we can actually use is the um, filter envelope generator. So let me just clear this for now. And now this might be a little bit more handy to some of you because we can actually bypass the filter entirely and just use this as a uh, source of modulation. So my filter is wide open. If I want to, I could add another filter back here to actually do some of the subtractive things. And instead I can just have this control something inside of the synthesizer. So let's say we want to we'll put this to four and we want to introduce some of that second oscillator into the mix over time. All right, let me just get a sound coming out of the amplitude envelope. We'll just set this up like a gate. We'll add some release so we can put release on here too. And I'll pull these all back at the start. So I can take the filter envelope here, FEG, sync that to the mix amount. And again, this is setting the depth of modulation. And now if I add in some attack, I can slow it down. Or I could speed it up. And in this case, this uh, filter curve, I'm sorry, guys, need to speed that up, is not going to have any kind of impact. And also, depth here isn't going to have any kind of impact. These two parameters are tied specifically to the filter. So the depth is set here, and you have to get that right. So this is exactly like what we've seen before. I could set a sustain amount. I can increase this all the way up. So it will go all the way around. But we're now settling at this sustain value. If we want to smooth that out a little bit. Smooth it out a little bit more. In this case, I was able to find it and hit it like right at 50%, which is pretty cool. And then I could add some release as well. So it's going to start going back to its default right now. When I let go, it just automatically shoots back. But maybe I want it to slowly fall back if I'm playing a sustain note. We could actually put this over or make it longer than the amplitude release. And so in that case, after the signal ends, it's actually not gonna make it all the way back. So that can be an interesting effect too. And so let's also take this and control something like pulse width. This one I'll stay minus 17. This one I'll add to plus 17 or more. Maybe I'll adjust the shape controls a little bit. Maybe change the pitch subtly. Add in some oscillator sync. And now it's about to get nuts. apply filtering we just don't have to add any of this um, envelope generator to it
So you can have lots of fun with that and it's a great way of adding some more interest into your sounds. This is a fundamental principle of subtractive synthesis and really of all synthesizers in general is understanding that we have modulator envelopes, okay? In this case, it's this envelope here or this envelope down here in addition to just our LFOs, which we'll look at in the next video. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys and you'll hear from me again in the next lesson. Take care.